Good morning, good morning. Oh, it's a gorgeous morning. Look at those fluffy white contrails that wouldn't be there if the planes weren't flying. They're all, that's all contrails, eh? Let me just tilt you up a bit here. See those contrails? Yeah, otherwise that would be a blue sky. Who says aviation doesn't contribute towards global warming? Or that it's only 1% of 1% or something. They actually produce the cloud cover for the day. Right. Let's peep and creep, peep and creep. How are you peeps? <laughs> Peepers and creeps. So it's a lovely August day. First real day of the summer, to be honest, and we're already halfway through August. Unbelievable. Considering the hot weather tends to start in the middle of May, we've had three months of really crap weather. By which I mean, you know, we like to, we like the sort of the French weather, don't we, or the, the Spanish weather. But we don't get that, we get the English weather. Not fair. That's what I say, they've had it for too long, let's do a swap. So the car's just passed its MOT. Yay! The Peugeot Rocket is going to be around for another year. They uh, could do the MOT, but they couldn't do the service, so it's just at its MOT. So, unfortunately, let me just check. Oh! No, I think we've still got a bit of a squeaky clutch. So. So perhaps we'll get that done at the service. So again, I apologize. But at least I've um, tied down the uh, spare wheel. Do you remember that old rattling spare wheel I used to have in the back? I've actually got, got on Amazon and bought a bit of uh, M10 uh, What's the word for it? Uh, uh, they're not bolts, are they? What's the word? When the bolt hasn't got a head on it, what's it called? Studding. M10 studding. There we go. 30 miles an hour. That's my tip. In a 30 mile an hour zone, change into third gear and you won't get done for speeding because you'll, uh, you won't want to rev the car high enough in third gear really to get above 30 miles an hour that's a little tip they teach on the speeding courses speeding courses of course are a bit of a con because they uh, allow you to avoid the points but then they charge you a massive amount of money which is equivalent to a fine so you might be better off just getting the points and taking the fine to be honest they've 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 finagled it so that it's like almost like six and one and a half a dozen of the other so you end up going on these very highly overpriced speeding courses. Not that I've ever been on one, but you know, you, you hear about things from patients, don't you? Ah, oh, on their way to school. So uh, yeah, so the car had its service. Now, there, there's a racket going on. I'm pretty sure there's a racket going on with MOTs. And as usual, it's a government-inspired racket, a government-created racket, a government-caused racket, um, which is that when you go for an MOT, it's, uh, there's the, the most they can charge is 54 quid. It's a statutory charge. And so I, like everybody else, as the initial reaction, oh, that's not bad, actually, 54 quid for an MOT. Well, they, you know, instead of thinking, oh, it's a racket and you know perhaps an MOT once every couple of years will probably be all right but no we think oh 50 where well, it's only 55 quid I suppose that's all right but then of course your car never passes it never passes so and that's because the government the, 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 the garages right well no, let's just say I'm not a massive fan of garages because of their lack of customer service they are um, engineers in general i think not just automotive engineers but engineers in general are a surly bunch 
They are very rarely capable of stringing more than three words together in a sentence. They don't do customer service uh, and they don't uh, really enjoy talking. They'd rather talk to the cars than they would to the people. So the only exception to that is main dealers where the main dealers are do have a high degree of customer service. What I sort of think of as American levels of customer service where you know they're trying very hard to identify with you you know and and uh, make sure that you're very happy and keep coming back are you still happy right are you sure there's anything else I could get you blah 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 right whereas you know in, in like in an English pub you'll get some drinks and then you'll get the dinner served up and then and then the waitress is coming you're like well aren't you gonna ask us if we want any more drinks you know I mean what's the whole purpose of this pub is it is it just to employ you like not to sell food and drinks anyway so engineers are you know the pretty well near the bottom of the barrel in terms of customer service if they're like the small private independent engineer um, the larger they get the more likely they are to have a front desk and as I say if they're like a main dealer then you'll get a very high degree of customer service but it's at the expense of insulating you for from the engineers you know the engineering place I mean okay I understand health and safety and everything but the engineering place is usually behind a uh, a wall, a door, and uh, mark no admittance to members of the public, you know, or please wait in the waiting room or something. And uh, I think that's uh, uh, they, 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 sometimes there's a concession to uh, the public's interest and possibly the public's right to know what the engineers are doing with their cars because they have like an observation window, you know like a, a glass window and uh, not that you can see anything through it or not that you're really encouraged to stand there and watch it's not an, it's not a spectator sport engineering but um, I suppose uh, from the main dealer's point of view it does decrease the chance of theft and increase the chance that an engineer might be spotted doing something that they shouldn't be doing uh, if there is if there is some visibility into the process but um, but no what happens is you know you go and you say to the receptionist well can I just uh, have have you done this to the car and they look at you and they say no I'll just go and ask the engineer and then you come back they come back and they say oh yeah uh, he said that they did do that and and you say well uh, can you tell me what you know what uh, type of thing they fitted and she and look at it and she'll go I'll just go and ask the engineer <laughs> So there's this firewall between yourself and the person who's doing the job, which is never good. You know, in my surgery, there's no firewall. I've got this uh, uh, Ukrainian woman that comes, comes in and she's asked me every possible question about uh, she needed a root treatment. Uh, and sometimes she asks the same question. Usually, do you not, doctor, do you not think I need antibiotics uh, you know which is like a very great favorite of the uh, everywhere um, east of Calais they like uh, they like their antibiotics so I'm like no I don't think you need antibiotics yes it will settle down I think no your body you have got antibodies which will deal with the problem no the sensation will and it's not unusual for it to feel odd but that will settle down no I don't know how long it'll take to settle down uh, it might be up to two years before it settles down. No, that's not normal, but it's not unheard of, you know? And, and it just on and on and on and on and on. Anyway, she's a lovely lady. She's got polydipsia, which means she drinks every minute, every minute of the day, she drinks a sip out of a bottle. And uh, she constantly tells me it's because she walked she walks and she's hot or it's hot or her mouth is dry or something and then half the time halfway through the treatment she needs to go to the toilet and then she's come back again and I told her she's going to wash out all her uh, uh, minerals you know but she's like no it's not and she's totally convinced that it's completely normal which leads me to believe that it's psychogenic obviously 
not uh, a symptom of uh, diabetes. Although I've told her, you know, that I said you've got a, a. I said I've looked up why you drink all the time. I said it's got a proper name. It's called polydipsia. She said no, 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 no. She said that's nothing. I haven't got that. No, it's, it's just he's normal. He's normal. I said it's not normal. She said I don't drink all the time. I said you do drink all the time. I said, for every visit you've been to see me, you have drunk all the time. I said, that's not, you know. I said, it could, can be a symptom of diabetes, uh, but I don't think so. I didn't tell her I thought it was psychogenic, but I'm gradually, gradually introducing her to the idea that what she's doing is not totally uh, uh, like a median behavior. Uh, and you have to do that some. Sometimes you see pathology that, uh, you know, that nobody else is diagnosing or certainly she wouldn't go to the doctor enough times and drink enough for him to diagnose polydipsia um, and uh, psychogenic polydipsia. To be honest with you, I didn't even know that it existed until I looked it up. Um, but, you know, I mean, as far as I say, you know, unless she uh, depletes all her sodium and potassium, she's... She's probably okay doing it. She's certainly well hydrated. <laughs> I mean, that's it, isn't it, these days? You for today, drinking all the time. Anyway, where was our garages? So, yeah, so customer service from a main dealer, but then they're likely to sell you a bottle of screen wash for 30 quid. So, you know, you have to be firm with the main dealers you have to say look I'm gonna put my car in for a service I have just changed the windscreen wipers I do not want new windscreen wipers for 50 quid um, and I have topped up the uh, window washer and I don't so I don't want a bottle of window washer for 30 quid um, I mean <clears throat> I've been tempted to say I've just changed the oil so I don't want I don't want new oil in it but I'll, I'll figure I'll let them change the oil, do you know what I mean? The rest of it they can pretty well do, but the, the, the extras that they, you know, it's like the jam on the jam for them. Uh, I do try, so far as I can, to try and, uh, uh, you know, tell them, tell them that I don't want them. But you have to tell them in advance. You can't say, <clears throat> they say we put new windscreen wipers on 50 quid. <coughs> For a start, you can bet they're obviously the uh, the uh, manufacturer's windscreen wipers, and so they they'll be like you know original spec. When really, what you don't need is original spec. You just want uh, two strips of rubber, don't you? Really, that work. I mean, you probably don't. You probably don't. You're probably driving a Jag. You want the original windscreen wipers, but I don't. I'm just happy with something that clears the rain off the windscreen. So you can't say, when they put them on, you can't say, oh, actually, no, I didn't want those. Can you take them off? You know, because obviously that's not doable at that point. They'll say they, they've chucked the old ones away. So there's this fiddle going on. Oh, look at all those contrasts. It does annoy me. It's only certain times of the year it happens, but this year, this today, I can't. Uh, I, can't, I, don't, I can't see there's no picture on the back of this otherwise I'd turn it up and right so you could see but um, I'll try and turn it up and right there we are can you see the contrails there now oh hang on I've just produced a picture yeah there we are there's the contrails there's me driving along the road, like a boss. So what was I saying? Yeah, so what they do is they fail you They fail you on something. Now, the reason why they fail you on something, and the latest thing that they fail you on is bulbs, right? This car failed its last MOT because one of the indicators wasn't orangey enough. This year, it failed Oh, it's MOT on the basis that one of the red bulbs wasn't red enough. 
And what that allows them to do is to sell you a bowl and also to charge you for cleaning out the um, inside of the plastic lens, the bulb cluster. Which I've never ever, honestly, I mean, what on earth they think they're cleaning out? I've never seen any dust or detritus or debris, dirt or anything inside. Inside, hello, what's this? some weirdness there. Spontaneous <laughs> bloody, bloody Terminator's just arrived. I'm going to go round the roundabout and see what the hell's going on there. That's a weird thing. It's coming out the back of that industrial estate, isn't it? Not in Victor Tours. But the one next to him, or round the back. Oh, I'm late. Otherwise, I'd have gone on to that industrial estate and tried to find out what's happened there. No, my natural nosiness has got the better of me. I'm going to have to be a bit late. No, I can't because it's miles. Oh no, it's not. Is it? Yeah, it's bloody miles. Yeah. Get on there. Right, come on. Let's get a wiggle on. Inspector Watson on the job. Radioactive release. Big old estate, this isn't it? Hello. Right. Cryo Ease Air Products. Total jobs, total jobs contracts. Yeah, perhaps they're delivering something. Perhaps it might be uh, cry, cryo ease, gas supply made easy. Well, it's certainly been made easy if you're driving along the ring road. You actually can just drive through a cloud of it. Let me just turn around. Now I'm gonna have to get a wiggle on back to work. Yeah, so, so supposing they're charging £60 an hour. That's amazing, the number of unions here. I might relocate my dental surgery down here. No idea, I wouldn't have quite so much parking. As you can tell from the BMWs. All this parking on the road here is because there's not enough parking in front of the units and they don't have a car park. I think they're missing a trick here because they could literally have a car park and charge people like £2 a day just to park their cars. This is all parking, look, see here. So you've got a dual carriageway access where it's effectively reduced to single carriageway just because of the parking. So let me finally finish this garage story, right? So 60 pounds an hour, they're um, charging. So they charge you uh, 20 minutes to take the lens off, put a new bulb in and and, uh, and uh, polish the lens <laughs> and stick it back on. And another one pound 30 for the bulb, which they probably pay 10 people. And then they pass the MOT and then it's it's gone through. Now, it all arises, I think, out of this stupid arrangement which is where the government sort of sets a fee for something which is less than the uh, market rate 
for the for what it constitutes and so um and so really the government in, in setting a fee and sort of thinking well we're going to stop people overcharging actually really just uh, forces everybody to undercharge and then that reduces the supply uh, so <clears throat> my initial delight at saying i can get an mot for 55 quid is tempered by the fact that there's another 30 quids worth of um, extras and let's face it i mean that's exactly what happens in the nhs or especially on the old in the old days when it was fee for item you know you would pay three pound for a checkup they used to make that up by doing a, a, sc a perfectly clinically necessary scan of polish and some bite wings every couple of years and so the patients ended up paying a bit more but then what would happen is i think it's bright lights going to make me sneeze Yeah, sorry, these contrails are really annoying me. There's absolutely no contrails over there, but there's loads of contrails over here because it's the Dover VOR beacon, and that's the one they all use to come in and out of the country from the continent. So, the you think that you're getting a subsidy from the government, right? Because you're getting an MOT at 55 quid. And you think that uh, in the same way as you used to think that if you were only paying three pounds or eight pounds for a checkup, that you were getting a subsidy from the government and the dentist was getting some sort of top up from the government that brought it up to the market rate. Whereas in fact, that was the very, very common misunderstanding and still is. The government subsidy is minuscule. The government subsidy is adjusted to the point at which it's just about worth claiming in bulk. So what happens is you do the work and the government pays you uh, just enough money for you to, with, with, which in combination with the patient's charge makes it just about worthwhile to work on the health service. But in fact, that's not the majority of the subsidy. The majority of the subsidy is actually the difference between the free market rate for what you're doing and um, and <clears throat> and the what you're actually getting paid. So you've got free market rate, minus patient's charge, minus government subsidy, equals dentist subsidy. And that's actually, is, at the moment, is about twice the other two subsidies combined. In other words, the market rate's about three times what the dentist gets on the health service. But it's still, providing you make substantial cuts in terms of quality etc it's still um, it's still possible to uh, you know providing you you chuck your ethics and your quality control out the window um, to um, pay the bills on the NHS so Oh God, yeah, that is true, yeah. This road is closed, the closest the road again. Made it one way. So now we're going around the, oh, it's just typical, isn't it? All right, so that's really, that's the gist of it. I was just, I just uh, to alerting you to the fact that, you know, you're gonna, your car's gonna get failed on MOT because of the bulbs, for some reason or another. And the uh, garages are, uh, poor communicators and that's because they provide a service that they're not particularly proud of and they don't really want to discuss it with you <laughs> unless they're a main dealer where they think that they were going to sell cars you know if they think that they might sell you a new Suzuki or something then the Suzuki service is going to be super chirpy aren't they uh, because they're looking to sell you a new car but you you know Joe Bloggs from Bloggs's garage up the wrong end of the high street He's not going to sell you a new car. Basically, he's just making his money uh, fiddling the, uh, you know, doing working out a service which is intangible. So you can't really know whether he's done a good job or not, you know, other than sort of word of mouth and the previous experience, etc. So he's going he's gonna to keep tight-lipped about the way he does things. 
and just hope that you think that 80 quid is a you know, decent enough price to get your car through its MOT for a year and whether or not you're going to make a fuss about the fact that it should have been 55 quid. Anyway, I'm going to ring work now and tell them that I'm going to be late and also that I've been gassed. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> okay, bye.